is how our body treats the materials. Absorb, metabolize, distribute, excrete. So how we handle those molecules is a pharmacokinetic parameter. How the molecule affect our body, good way or bad way, that is a pharmacodynamic parameter. So drug, if you handle the medicine, it has a two aspects we look at, whether they are easily accessed to our body, that's a pharmacokinetic. And how long they stay, that's also a pharmacokinetic. And whether the molecule is good or bad, toxic, that is pharmacodynamic parameter. Okay, those two are observational two parameters we look at them. <laughs>
but most of the device will be right inside. Approximately here, one inch. Probability. Popularity. Partition. Coefficient. Partition became one and one. Say again. No more opaque and water, he said. Partition coefficient that you can no more opaque and water. Anybody can correct it. It's close, but there's one mistake. It's all something, but not opaque. Coefficient became octanol and water. If you use octane, that's a two hydrophobic, but they cannot be used for another. Octanol has one hydroxyl group, so the surface has a little you know, exchange property, but octanol is relatively hydrophobic. Water is hydrophilic, and then those are those partition coefficients. There is a log value here, but the higher log P is more hydrophobic. So if and C, Anybody knows what is C? No. Huh? That's a calculated. It's not, you can measure it experimentally, then you just say one P. So how do you do the experiment? You add the material into one to one mixture of solution, and then separate them. It's easy to separate by extraction. And then measure those amount in each solvent. So then you can calculate the P. But for both, all the molecules, if you need to measure, it's too much work. But there is a problem. You can calculate the approximate log P. That's a slow. So log P wise, if log P is a zero, one. If log P is a one, then what's the ratio? One to one. Hmm? Okay. If they one to one, you think it's a ten to one. Ten where in Okano. So higher number of P means it's a more hydrophobic. Okay? Low P zero, then what's the ratio? Okay. That's a one to one. Okay. So the Bisky rule says the range of a low P value wise, two to five is a reasonable range. If it's less than two, too hydrophobic, too hydrophilic. Higher than five, it's a too hydrophobic. You have seen those the other structure of asset unopen, which we take quite often. Quite simple molecule. Right? Quite simple molecule. This one has a quite good effect, fast effect for the, um, the body temperature control. And if you look at here, comparing to the size of the molecule, it has a reasonably hydrophilic part here and here. So you can assume that that's a maybe near to hydrophilic set rather than hydrophobic set. Okay. Of course, it's really possible to get the exact number. The exact number is 1.5. Okay. So this is relatively hydrophilic molecule. Nobody got the right answer. <laughs> How many of them? Correct. How do you know there are the acceptor? Here, 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 same as How many? Three. Three. Okay. 
good one, good <laughs> two, good and three. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here the hydrogen loving donor is one, two, receptor, and all numbers. So if the further this rule has been made by Yukinsky and uh, has been modified several times, but we to make the, the situation simple, only count the N O. No count the F S P. Okay. And exchangeable proton is a hydrogen binding donor. Okay, so the three. So less than less than five for the donor, less than ten for the acceptor, that's kind of good signal. This was uh, checking whether the fire is happening or not. Let's move to the questions. <coughs> okay, first, first part was the drop lightning. Yeah, you know. Um, when we are checking the rotational points, then we don't have to check the um, H point. Which one? What do you mean? Um, points. It's almost rotating like this. So this one, you don't feel the effect, even though there is possible rotation. Now, CH3 is like this. But if you rotate, then you feel this pylon rotating. So only that effect is like that. Okay? That's the point. And all the wind structure, we don't count. We assume that they are rigid enough. Single bond, double bond, it doesn't matter. Any wind structure, they are bound. So it's not really okay. okay. So in this uh, drop like this, uh, one of those uh, general questions we gave. So bioavailability, oops. And in reactive intravenously, we assume that 100% bioavailability. So that means when we have the consider our body topology, inside the cell is really inside the whole body. But it's uh, difficult to measure inside the cell concentration. So we use a little convenient in the surrogate measurement available in the blood stream. Blood is actually it's not real inside. Blood cells are the floating in the blood. So blood media, serum media is also outside, but that's relatively deep inside our body. So that's kind of the, the standard to gauge the bioavailability. So that's why if you inject it directly into IV, it goes into the heart, and then it distributes everywhere in our body. So that's we consider as 100% bioavailability. Compared to that, if you take those uh, the material orally, then until it reaches to the target, means inside the other uh, bloodstream, so this tract from mouth to the other end, this inter the gastrointestinal pathways, these pathways should be considered the outside, right? We discussed this before. If you consider our body is like a donor, then this is inside of the donor cell. So this, this is still outside. It should be observed through the, the intestine or the, the stomach. And they enter into our body fluid. Then that measurement is 
how many percent it could be done compared to two direct injections. So to be a good drug or convenient drug, if you should go to the hospital all the time, you should get injection that's painful and time-taking. So if you take a pill, and if you can achieve good percent of absorption in product, then it's more convenient to get. So then that consideration, is a real consideration is whether that material can penetrate this membrane and then reside some space in our body. So that means the most important the factor consideration is whether the molecule can penetrate this cell membrane itself. Cell membrane actually has potential on the surface and it's live cells. And those potentials are derived from the lipid structure. And they say it's the outside, the positive, inside the negative. But actually, phospholipids are all negative, all neutral. There's no positive phospholipids. So that means inside is a little more negative, and then outside. Then if you consider those charges of the drug molecule, if it's negatively charged, it cannot access to the surface because of the repulsion. And positive charges, at least approaching to the surface, is possible. Positive negative interaction. Next step problem is penetrating this layer. This layer, do you remember the thickness of this layer, cell membrane? Four meter? Four nanometer, okay. So this is approximately a four nanometer thickness. It should penetrate through this. And if it's too highly filled, majority of them stay just a hand around this space or this space, and I penetrate like a wire. If it's very hydrophobic, higher than five, then they need any membrane, they just stop there, does not move. That's why some of the drugs, if you take, then you feel the, the bitter taste for a long time in your tongue, because they do not move. You cannot be washed out by wet. Okay? So to get reasonable stuff with penetration, it should have reasonable hydro, partially hydrophobic, partially hydrophobic, like that one. So that range is a two to the five. So you guys can select selected some of these that will come out and then calculate this uh, numbers. So already practiced with this, fully of this, and let's check quickly. So here, of course, you cannot get this big number quickly. Molecular mass, this is 180. Astin has the same mass with our glucose. And is it really? Anyway, this is just a part of your, your answer. Partition coefficient wise, this is reasonable range. A little higher than two. That's good. Now, a little bit of comment. A quick one. What's that? One, two, three, four. Rotation bar. Can we get five? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, next molecule. Adenomide. Let's use only one of them. Molecular weight 258, a little bigger, still less than 500, that's okay. And partition coefficient is kind of upper limit, but still that's okay. Up to five, usually it's okay. And adenomide is going to? One, two, where? What's that thing? One, two, three, four, five, six. Do you count this one? Tertiary amine, do you count? Yes, no, here, yes, you count. Because it can accept both and here, right? Using that, quaternary, quaternary ammonia, what do you think? There is no further high the proton accepting part, right? Quaternary part is used. Whole chain, there's no chance to attract the other proton. So, this one you don't count. Make sense? All others you can take the extra proton. That's why you count as a separate. Even amide and NH, this one too, this one has a lot of electron. Everything you can take. Six. Rotational one. Zero. Where is it? Hmm? One? 
Can you point it out to the list? Only one here. Follow the bar, double bar, you will come out. <coughs> Only one. Okay, this molecule. Even I don't know the name of this molecule. And this one, <coughs> hydrogen bonding product. Zero. Oxatec. Two. Rotation about. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 double bond will come during present of this. Five. Okay? Tamiflu. One point five is quite hydrophilic. And hydrogen bonding bonus. Two, protected. <coughs> Six. So acceptance number is always higher than donor, right? So that's why donor less than five, acceptor less than ten, rotation about less than five or ten. Rotation about five. Anyway, this is multiplication of the five. So this rule sometimes is called as rule of five. Okay, molecular weight less than five only. Low P value wise less than 5. Hydrogen bonding donor less than 5. Acceptor 5 by 2. Something like that. And let's move. Somebody chose this gigantic molecule, Texol. If you can solve the Texol, if you can solve all the problems. So, molecular <laughs> weight much bigger than 500 still will be used. Hydrogen obesity is just like we can go. Okay, hydrogen bonding donor number. Four and five, four, five. That was Monday. You choose one, four, five, one, two, three, four. There's the zero five. This connected to carbon. Is a carbon. Sometimes to show that the steel chemistry is more age, but this one is not connected to beta alpha right? It's a carbon. It's a force. Let's count again. Previously, I counted 24, now I got 23. <laughs> okay, let's count it together. I guess 
the new part of this one too. This one, CH, again, same problem as this, right? But this is also just a dot, so we don't feel those effects. And the original question here, why this structure, if it has the uh, rotational bond, then it has a problem. If it, is a, it has a lot of rotational uh, the bond, then they are flexible. Rotating feeling, space is changing. Then it's a difficult to, to make sharp edge in the paint phase. If it is more rigid a structure, then it's uh, easier to paint phase in this membrane. That's why hydrogen binding donor and acceptor number then may define the hydrophilicity. If there are too many hydrogen binding acceptor and donor, that means it's uh, easily miscible with the water. Then that's a uh, hydrophilic. That's a problem. I, the rotational bound, it makes the molecule too much flexible. So to make the molecule better, just like usually you make the ring. In this structure, if you make the ring here, this one connected to this. Then all of a sudden, all the bond here connecting on this ring is all fixed. You can remove six or seven rotational bonds. Okay? So that's that's why the rotational bond is important for the Okay, based on this, we all of you asked me this question. Definition was beginning, the beginning. Oh. And move this to the okay. So here, they compete rotational bound whether this is mutual is correct. Here, let's count together. Rotate the bond 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Seems like they used a different definition. Okay. Here, count the bond 1, 2 count. How many rotate the bond here? Based on this, this rule is not applicable. This is just gives you some brief idea. Maybe this molecule may have reasonable property for measure as well. And this measurement is the PK parameter or PD parameter. This is the PK parameter. Okay. Whether this molecule is reasonably can be observed, how it is handled by our body, that's a PK parameter. Why this is important? The compound is uh, active or not, that's more important. Maybe, but to be active, it should reach to the target area first. So that's a PK parameter. Okay, so now cancer. Cancer, well, we have heard of the cancer. What is cancer? How do we define cancer? Abnormal cell means like a shape is a strange. What is abnormal? How abnormal? <coughs> stop regenerating. Regenerating something like a stem cell. Mm -hmm. Replicating. Replicating. Stem cell replicates. Baby replicates. Baby is a cancer. Uncontrolled. uncontrolled growth. Okay, we need to be balanced. But uncontrolled uh, the growth. What's uncontrolled? If it has uh, the small abnormal thing, maybe cancer or not, it's not obvious. And if it's becoming bigger like this, oh, it may be maybe strange. And this is very obvious. Okay? Something uncontrollable, uncontrollably uh, the, the growth. Then it has some problem. Now, by looking at uh, those effectors. This is kind of the defined whole mass of our cancers. So it seems like they keep proliferating. The signaling is always the upper limit. And they need to be balanced. So we don't want to have big eyes, big ears or eyes. We need to be balanced with the other side. 
and that suppression is not working. They proliferate the threat, they live further, since that they don't die. And they resist for that, they live forever, and they the same thing, replicate forever, and they don't die. And they recruit new blood things to their cell. And uh, they have the invasion moving to the other tissue. So those are kind of a test of those things. Now there are several pumps, regular cells. If the cell is becoming bigger, in this case we call hypertrophy. Hyper means it's a higher number. What's the opposite word for hyper? Hypo, P O, no I. Okay? Hypo, hypertrophy. If the number is increased, we call hyperplasia. Size is becoming bigger, hypertrophy. This is usual tissue, the size grows. But this is sometimes it happens too, where? In lipid cells. In lipid cells, since like they have this size becoming bigger. Number is also increasing, but size is also becoming bigger. So if you do the diet, then the size is becoming a little smaller. If you wait again, then it can come back. Easily flexible. Now this is kind of normal situation. And cancer situation, and abnormally excessively growing, this is a regulated one, grow very fast and then invade the different spaces. And also a lot of mutations that happen when the shape, this is kind of abnormal. Bigger, same shape, and kind of a, the uh, different the size and function of the same cells. So this is kind of usually found in cancer cells. Now, treatment. How do you treat cancer? Unfortunately, I don't have cancer. Then what do I do? Cancer patient, what treatment do they get? Surgical. Surgery. First of all, remove the cancer part. That's obvious and that's the choice. If the chunk is too big, then surgery may be the first choice. Still, there's maybe some leftover cancer, and it's difficult to completely remove. Or some part of a very important part, cancer happens in the brain. You don't want to cut it too much in the brain. So kind of a marginally limit the, the minimum amount you cut it out. Then there's some leftovers. Then what's the next treatment? Remodel? Yeah, radiation. So that's kind of uh, the next treatment. So you don't know which is the exact boundary. So cut it out by surgery, then you radiate the high energy uh, the light, high energy radiation. So what is the radiation? High energy light, any name you have? Hmm? X-ray, okay, X-ray. X-ray is a high energy um, the radiation, that's the truth. But have you heard you use the X-ray for cancer treatment? No, X-ray is not commonly used for cancer treatment. Then what is the other way to use? Gamma ray. Is one of uh, the light energy. These two, how different X ray from gamma ray? X ray is an electromagnetic wave. Yes? No? Yes? Then gamma ray is? You have the question also? Yes, gamma ray is also electromagnetic wave. Then what's the difference between two? Which one is the shorter? Gamma ray is the shorter, true, then which has a higher energy? Shorter wavelengths of the electromagnetic wave has a higher energy. What's the common fact between these two? Speed. Speed of light. It's a kind of light. Okay, gamma ray is a one good other option to use as the treatment. But there are other, even more commonly used, the radiation. Radiation. 
chemotherapy in the neck will have weak, but radiation. How many is the only way to have a heart? Heavy atom accelerator to meet the possibility of heavy heart. Other way, gamma and there is another alpha ray. Hmm? Alpha ray and beta ray. All of them are radiation. All of them are pantasan and all of them are main material for pantasan radioactivity. So that's why it is the discovery of this order alpha first and beta ray and gamma ray. And let's check. What is alpha ray? It's a nucleus of a helium. It's not light. It's a particle. All of a sudden, out of this radiation, and all of a sudden, particle is here. What is beta ray? Okay, four seconds. What is beta ray? Jenny, what is the beta ray? Kids in this class learn. Huh? Kids in this class learn. No, this is for the physics. <laughs> I don't know physics. <laughs> what is the beta ray? Beta ray is high energy electron. That's also particle. So when the nucleus is breaking, that's a nuclear reaction. Right? When the nucleus, nucleus is broken, then this kind of a fragment is generated. Alpha ray, the helium, the nucleus, is a two proton, two neutron particle. And beta ray, high energy of an electron. And gamma ray, gamma ray is electron magnetic ray. All of these three has a totally different characters. And for therapy, very funny way, gamma ray is the weakest because it can penetrate very quickly. Even higher energy than X-ray, X-ray can stop by bone. That's why you can see the body's bone shape. That's X-ray. Gamma ray has even higher energy, even sharper needle. It can just penetrate the bone field. So to get the gamma ray, you need to concentrate to one side. So usually, if you use a gamma ray for cancer treatment, you have gamma ray radiate like this way, focus on the one side. It has its own name. Gamma light. So that's why one penetration it doesn't damage much, but if you concentrate on one side, then it can damage it to the central part. Yeah, that's one way you can use gamma ray. Energy wise, beta ray is even more cytotoxic than gamma ray. So beta ray is even more effective cancer treatment. Funny way, alpha ray, what do you think? Even stronger. One particle of uh, the the alpha ray, people say it can kill 10 cells. Can you believe this? Particle is very, very small, right? And cell is much, much bigger, but it's moving around and destroying many of those materials. That's why heavy atom therapy, even higher than helium, like a carbon particle, that's a tumor capacity. That's kind of a new other way of the therapy. If you target statistically one site, you can then you can physically can kill those cancers. So anyway, these are kind of common other methods of cancer treatment. Surgery and radiation is like in this way. And drugs. So this is chemistry class. So drugs for the cancer treatment. That's the topic of this week. So those drugs, you can be a small, small molecule. So that's usually what you call drug. Or it can be biological materials like antibody or proteins, kind of things. And even for cells, can be used for cancer treatment. This is next to next first topic. And so these are kind of the class of our cell cancer. And first generation of our cell cancer drugs, this is what we call chemotherapy. This already has been used for quite long, and this is what we have studied this week. And those are, those are chemotherapy drugs mainly targeting fast growing cells. <coughs> cancer is usually growing faster than normal cells. In our body, some cells 
they do not divide here. For example, neurons. We have heard that for many, uh, many, many, many times the neurons cannot regenerate. Once it is formed in our brain, I get hit, then 10 neurons of the died, then I get more and more stupid. They never come back. If they're fully differentiated, then they don't grow fast. Another tissue, heart. Heart works very hard for almost 100 years. They should work very hard. And but they do not proliferate. That means that they should do it for long. So that's why they do not divide. They never get cancer. Cancer only happens to fat blood cells. Okay. So fat blood cells can be good target, but unfortunately, hair, hair stems are here. They proliferate quite quickly. That's why we get the hair quite fast growing. So if you look at those fast growing, means it's not only the size growing, it's number growing. Then we can look at how the cells will divide and they make more numbers. So first of all, they need to one cell become to two cells. First, the job is that they need to collect more materials, enough material for the double size, and then divide into half. And not only those materials, what the important thing is, they need to share this genetic information, make a copy of the genetic information. DNA duplication is an important part of it. And then those information should be evenly distributed into half. So then, you, by looking at this pathway, this procedure, we can think about the target of the cancer cell. Now, this cell division needs to be very carefully evaluated. Maybe that's the most important job of the cell. Mating and making baby is maybe quite important role in our whole life, similar thing to the cell. So, they have quite controlled pathways, so called the step cycle. First step is they need to collect enough material almost a double might be about the size, almost near to double. Then those steps is called the G1. That step is get one, begin different event. So get one, collect enough material. And I feel like I have enough material, then I can go to hibernation, like a kill them or the like. Okay. Now, second step is enough material is collected, then, then start copy of the DNA. So this step is called the S. The S is the synthesis. Synthesis of the DNA. After synthesis is fully finished, then check again whether everything is okay or not. Exactly what copy is made. 20, 23 pairs of chromosomes we have. Only one copy we need. One missing, one extra, both of them is found. Okay. So checking whether everything is okay or not, one more checking step is to get to. And then real division is called as mitosis. So by using this abbreviation, we call G1, S, G2, and so on. So this is so-called the MD cell cycle for cell division. So here, by if you look at the uh, DNA amount, you can think originally it was a two N. One end is from father, the other end is from mother. So we have a two end DNA. Before it is dividing into half, it should reach double cell. Then you can see this is G1. So by looking at the cell, by if you have a the way to measure the DNA amount, then we can we can get the idea whether this cell is in G stage. If it is a 12 stage, G1. Increasing but Below 4n, this is the S stage. Make sense, right? And then G1, G2 is a 4n here. And then before it is a dividing, n is very quick. Everything is okay, then break. So this is G2n. And it was if the divide, it becomes back to the 2n stage. So if you have the tool to measure the DNA contents in one cell, you can define which stage of those results are. So based on this, 
protecting you. What, what they did to him, him face. Okay. Does it matter that you know? The M phase can be divided, uh, divided into different phases. How is the structure? Let's look at M phase, most likely. Synthesis is ongoing. Until the synthesis is ongoing, still those chromosomes are spread out. It's a new chromosome. New chromosome. And once they start to aggregate into chromosome, then we come from here, which is M phase. And around in the middle, metaphase, and then moving to the other side, the inner phase, and then divided telophase. So this is from here up to here. This is what we call M phase. <coughs> so this is M phase. So chemotherapy. Then by looking at the, those pathways, which step you should attack that is the stage. DNA synthesis is part, maybe one time. So that's why DNA activating region is quite common. And DNA binding, not activating, but binding, or DNA replication attacks, or another target. So this one I will tell you to share. So DNA is the main target during those DNA replication. There are many enzymes in this DNA of the, the replication. The big one is the DNA proliferase. But main target usually helicase to here. Helicase of popo isogenase is here. Helicase is double strand open up in there. That's a helicase. Popo isogenase. Popo means a populism. The chimney of the What are the recognition? Popo isogenase is a topology is a changing. That topology is this super helix structure. DNA is a helical structure with a single helical. And then that is coiled again and again. So during this course, it is tangled further and further. So to release the piece of thing, time and time, you flip one side and then a little relax of this part. That's a five of each one. So making big packing to the partially open structure that isomerization is done by popon isomerase. So these two are kind of common the anti-cancer drug. If you look at those one by one, number one, activating agent. Number two, activating like agent, I will show you. And then DNA binding and RS. So these three are DNA of the damaging agent. Activating where? So this is DNA one of the DNA of uh, the base. And if you look at this structure, this is a guanine. And you have ABCG, this is G. By looking at this structure, do you see more nucleophile or more electrophile? I did an organic chemistry, sorry. Nucleophile has higher electron density. Electrophile is very poor electron density. By looking at this structure, hydrogen bonding donor and hydrogen bonding acceptor, which one is higher? It has a more hydrogen acceptor, right? Acceptor means it can donate low K electron. Those are nucleophiles. If you compare nucleophile amount and electrophile amount in our body, always more nucleophiles we have than electrophiles. And that's why so that position, let's say, this is nucleophile. If you add electrophile here, the example of electrophile is an activating agent, like active alight. Then, in this DNA, the, the, the Osman clip pairing, and this is nucleophilic position. And if this position is activating by this kind of reagent, other part, you don't need to pair. This part, I feel highlight. That part can be nucleophile can attack and release this chloride and make a covalent binding. So this is chemically reactive reagent, usually reactive with the nucleophile. These are electrophiles. By those electrophiles, this example is an activating agent because this part is an active part. If this is a label over here, then 
extra material is tangled around the here, then this wasn't a great structure, it will be a little shaken. And when the DNA of the checking enzymes comes through, then they may try to fix this or block the DNA synthesis. So this is one way of DNA damage. Open DNAs. Cancer cells are fast growing, that's, they, that's why they are not compact structure, they are open structure. So then this isolating agent they can label, can attack this open DNA. That's isolating agent. Okay, those isolating agents, electrophiles, can react with the DNA and then make this kind of linkage. Another very famous cancer drug, cisplatin. By looking at that, this position also good living group. DNA can attack one side and release this, and attack another one can release this. So not only single binding, two sides can bind then in DNA. One side attack here, the other side attack here. DNA is a kinked. Two binding is a flip like this. DNA was like this, now it's a kinked. It's a strange structure. This is an activation, activating light reagent. Why light? This is not IQ. To be IQ, this should be carbon. So platinum is a metal. So again, comparing this to this, both of them are electrophiles. But this is not IQ, that's why right, isolating light agent. But word is like that, but function is almost similar. It's a labeling DNA with extra material. DNA modified, DNA damage. Any electrophiles can react with open DNAs. That's the idea. Okay? Not only isolating, sometimes this is a flat molecule, like the phosphorescein, these are flat molecules, they can enter, chelate those layers of the DNA double helix, planar structure here, they can enter, insert it like this. And then another motility here, this can generate RS. So this is intercalating reagent and then entering into DNA structure and doing something bad nearby. So this is another mechanism. So all of the three, I said, isolating reagent, isolating reagent, isolating light reagent, both of them are electrophile, I said. It's a reaction, react with the DNA and add something onto the DNA, just that. Even though it's not commonly add, Third so possibility is intercalate and reside inside the DNA and generate ROS and slowly damaging those DNAs. So this class of molecules are DNA active molecules. Attack where? DNA synthesis. Okay. Now, one more class. Here, during those end phase, chromosome aligned in the middle and then some fiber is attached to this chromosome and then uh, attract to each position the whole sample group like this. If you look close, this is chromosome and these are those the fibers. These fibers are microtubules. And microtubules is composed of these tubular <laughs> proteins. And to get this kind of motion from one side to the other, and there should be one moving side and one the receiving side. So microtubule has one going side and then one emission side, moving one direction, positive end and negative end. That should be very should be very dynamic. One side should be growing, the other side should be shortening. That's why there is some movement. And this protein, microtubule, is controlled by GTP and GDP change. ATP, we believe that that's our biological energy source. <coughs> GTP, in a sense, ATP, GTP, what's the big difference? Basically, both of them have a triphosphate, and only the base is different, and it's on, almost the same energy they need to give. Okay? But ATP has been used for other <coughs> applications more than GTP, that's why. We, we call ATP as energy source, but GTP also has a similar function. If GTP is bound to one end, it has a high energy, and it can grow. And by releasing that, 
using that energy and it becomes uh, the, the vulnerable, it can be open. So this dynamics is quite important. Region of the speed of the drawing is very important. Now here, if you have any graphs, Hector we just have seen, analyze those rotation and number number. Hector is reflecting this basis, GDP to GDP state. It keeps active state, means stabilized negative state. The other one, like a purchasing. Purchasing is a very famous molecule. What is the function of a purchasing? You have a curve, purchasing. You ate the product of purchasing. Purchasing formula. Never heard of purchasing? Purchasing has been used to modify some fruit to make some convenient fruit product. Seedless melon. If you have purchasing, then it block this passage, stable one into unstable one, and the other way, unstable one to stable one. That's why purchasing unstabilized micro -tube. It is opposite effect. If you have the tax of over stabilized micro -tube, doesn't move, then still the cell cannot divide. And purchasing break up this micro -tube. There is no machinery to attract this. Uh, the chromosome. That's why cell cannot divide. That's why 2n should make the seed, but it becomes a 4n, 6n. The body is growing, but seed cannot be formed. That's why it forms the seedless product. Okay. Either way, stabilize or destabilize, those are affecting micro tubule, and then make a problem for cancer, and cancer cannot grow. So to summarize, Attacking those cell cycle. One side was the DNA attacking, open DNA, or DNA synthesis of the blood. Right? The other one was chromosome moving machinery blocking, those microtubules. Those two are main class of human therapy. And those drugs should have effect for any fast growing cells. That's why it's difficult to avoid those types of one more thing. To monitor this, we, we have seen this. Do you think that any way we can monitor those per cells of this, the amount of DNA? Have you heard? Or have you used? There's some seniors in here too. If you add DNA <coughs> interpolating drug and each has a fluorescent. By adding this drug to the, to, to the cell, it binds to DNA and shows those the DNA amount. And you can flow those cells through tube and measure one by one those amount of the, the, the fluorescence. Then you can measure those amount of amount of DNA. Then why is this with the cell count? At that this is the, uh, the DNA amount. So 200 is the full end. Is a normal state G1 and 400. This is a 4M. Then the cells can be moving to this position. If you divide this one, then you can make this kind of a distribution. And this is G1. This is should be the extra thing. DNA is increasing. This is a finished. This is a 4M. That should be G2 4M state. Sometimes you can see it's more of a fragment. This is maybe fragmented. The cell, the fragment, not real full cell. So real shape of this kind of technique, uh, this kind of a measurement, so called the flow cytometry. Flow means you flow the cell. Cycle is the cell. Metry is the measurement. Okay. By flowing the cells and then measure those properties of the cell using DNA dot. Then this is real image. If you inject this cell. Majority of the cells you can see, they are in G1. And then once they are ready, they are collecting the materials. Once they are ready, then they start synthesis. So this is S phase. As you can see here, S phase is about 20%. And G2M is about 20%, 50. 
and G1 is in the lead. This is the steel, this is the actively growing cells. If you take out and measure, you may see only one PT. They don't divide. Okay. So this is kind of a fast growing of the, the cells disposition. Let's just say this is a cancer cell. Now if you had a drug, then you may expect a strong result. If you had a here, Tactol, what do you expect? Tactol is a purely stabilizing agent. Then which step, which step would be blocked? DNA synthesis or M phase, right? You may block with the cell division. Then you can see if you add a textile, then you can see this is textile like material. Then you will see originally it has a much higher <coughs> accumulated over and over. This stage it is accumulated. By looking at this at the, the profile, you can get the idea what is the, the function of that impact cell. Okay. If you add any S phase in here, then originally this shape, then this stage is a blood. It cannot reach to the this stage. The synthesis is not complete. This is S phase. So this is the way how you can see those are the principal cancers activity. Okay, one of you asked the, the question that interpretation of a percent or inhibition percent, how do you get the number? Well, if you see this kind of a uh, the graph, then you can find depend, depending on the uh, if this is effect. Okay, this is effect here. Percent is always a relative value. So when it says concentration, so the percent is weight percent, we said, if you don't say volume on the percent. Now in this case, percent would be, this is a zero percent, this is a hundred percent, this is a zero percent. And 10 percent, maybe, this is, if it is effect, then it would be a 10 percent, 90 percent, something like that. So effect-wise, drug effect is one way. Or maybe that effect is inhibition is the effect. That's possibly true. Then if it is an enzyme inhibitor, then maybe you can put it as activity. Activity is decreased by adding the drug. Concentration of drug is increasing, and this is removed, the decreased. Then this is inhibition concentration. Then this is inhibition and PT concentration is decreased. So both ways you can put this in hundred percent. This is zero percent. Not here. Okay. There's always background here, so this is zero percent. This is the compression can be There is a potency and efficacy. So let's check. So this is the potency or efficacy. If you have a, if you have these two drugs, A and B, this is comparing to potency or efficacy. This is potency. Same maximum effect. But this one has amount of amount required is different. Right? So that's why if you have two material here, A and B, which drug is a better drug? A because you can use small amount. Potency defines the amount you need to get. To get the reasonable activity, let's say 50 is the required amount, then this is EB50, this is EB50. The potency defines amount you need. The higher amount, you have a more chance to be toxic. Okay. Efficacy, this is, this, is, this is efficacy. So A and B, which one is a higher efficacy? A has a higher efficacy. Okay. Efficacy determines how much effect you can get. You need to reach here if you take a drug B. Even though you take enough, still you cannot get the maximum amount. So you should be careful. Which one is uh, your optimum activity is important. Right? You have a diabetes. You have too high glucose concentration. You need to decrease. But if you decrease it too much, then it's also very dangerous. We have a fever. We wanted to, to turn down the temperature. But we had a 40, but it reaches a 30 degrees, and that's also dangerous. So that's why you know it's not easy to say which activity is a bad. And then you can determine which one is the optimum. Okay. Anyway, this is the definition of 
efficacy and potency. I think, yeah, this is the last of the part. So this week, I tried to give you the idea of small molecules of property. And it's a first generation drug, it's a cell. The target was a fast growing cell. So next week, we are going to study specific drugs, targeted the cancer cells, the so so-called second generation the drug. That means the next week we will handle third generation drugs. Okay? Any questions? Just this like this. So let's say if you look at the mitochondria has its own DNA, and if you add any DNA affecting compounds, it may affect cytotubule too, and the mitochondria DNA too. But if you look at here, maybe this kind of big DNA, and then opening up helicase or copper isomerase, I don't think the mitochondria has that. Mitochondria DNA is much simpler and shorter, and this kind of uh, the enzymes may be only reducing in the host size. So maybe that's, that's one way we can control. Uh, I never heard that the DNA and creating agents have a problem with the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. But that's an interesting point. Practically, maybe it's not observed by the mouse. That's why people do not say much about it either. What is that? What is authentic? Yeah. So we can tell you. When you said dye, uh, you mean, could you teach us what's the advantage of fluorescence dye over just the dye? Yeah? Okay, after here, so guys have a good week uh, and see you next week.